Hi guys. Hello. Thank you guys for coming. This is great. We have some people jumping on. That's awesome. Hi, James. <laughs> Hi, Sandro. Hey, Joey. Hey, Anwesha. Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone, and good evening to those who, who are on the other side of the world where it is evening there already. <laughs> Very excited to have you guys here. So thank you so much. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Kath Ann. I am the host of the Homework Help Show, hosted by Homework Help Global. And you've also probably seen me on some of our Instagram content um, online as well as on YouTube. So it's great to see so many folks joining us here today. I'm just going to go through a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. So, um, so. Um, you might notice the red button here on the left side of the screen. That indicates that we are recording this webinar. So just a heads up to anyone who wants to participate in the one-on-one -on -one conversation toward the end of the webinar, we will be recording that. Um, just wanted to let you know ahead of time so you're aware. And you do have the option to adjust your audio settings here on the webinar. So if you did want to adjust your audio settings, if you find them too quiet or too loud, there's an audio settings button in the lower left corner of your screen and you should be able to um, check it and adjust your audio settings right there. I also wanted to let you guys know that we have our awesome colleagues, Ken and Gina here in the background, helping me out to moderate the comments. So if you do have a question, if you have a specific question, um, there is a, an option to fill in the Q&A button right beside the raise your hand tool. You'll see a little button that looks like a hand. The question and answer button is right beside that. So as a way to moderate the comments or questions, um, if you have a question, just put it in that Q&A button and Gina and Ken will help me uh, respond to those questions. And if there are any specific questions, um, I can also respond to them over the, uh, the live here as well. So, um, and then as you probably noticed, we also have the chat. Here looks like you're already using the chat. So that is absolutely wonderful. Okay, great. I think that is all the housekeeping items. Oh yes, and as I mentioned, at the end of the webinar, it's really exciting. We are going to be offering a chance to do some one-on-one -on -one, uh, English practice with me. So make sure that you stay tuned until the end of the webinar. I won't take too much of your time, so we will jump into the content. Let us know if you have any questions about any housekeeping items, and Ken and Gina will happily uh, respond to those questions. Okay, so great. I'm going to open up and share my screen here. So today, as you probably knew, this is our very first English language webinar here at Homework Help Global. And today we're focusing on breaking down the IELTS with one-on-one -on -one English practice, as I mentioned. So as you might know, my name is Kath Ann, and I would like if you guys could, in the chat, we can see your name, but if you could share where you're from, and what your favorite color is in the chat. Um, my colleague Ken is actually going to release a question and answer poll. So if you guys wanted to answer what your favorite color is uh, on the poll that he's going to put up there, that would be great too. So I see the poll is going up there. And while you guys are doing that, I'm going to jump in to a quick um, overview of Homework Help Global and all of the services that we offer. So Homework Help Global is a leader and your one-stop for custom essay writing services. Um, we have highly specialized expert writers in a variety of different topics, and we work directly with our clients to fulfill any of your needs. Um, as well, I've listed some of the um, 
services that we do offer. So as, uh, as uh, is mentioned here, we cover academic needs, we can help you with edit editing, we can create PowerPoints, we help with resume review, um, we can do cover letters and admissions essays. So if you are looking to apply to university, for example, that is something that we can certainly help you with. So, um, and as some of you may know, we also create free online academic content and English language content. That's something that we've been branching into a little bit more. So you can find that content on YouTube as well as Instagram, and you guys might be familiar with that. We also have our Student Influencers podcast, where we talk to students from all around the world about their experiences in university and college. So if you did want to check that out, we are on a variety of, of uh, podcasting platforms such as Spotify, Apple iTunes, Anchor, as well as many more. All you have to do is search Homework Help Global and you will easily be able to find us. All right, let's go back to the poll. Um, I think I saw that one of the, the um, hmm, let's see if I can see the poll here. I don't, I don't think I can see the poll anymore. Um, or maybe I just don't know how to see it. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> so uh, we have, what is your favorite color? 25% said red, 13 blue, 13 yellow, 38 green. Woo, that's my favorite color, as you can tell by my shirt. <laughs> uh, no one really likes orange or pink and 13% purple. Very cool. So thank you guys for uh, participating in our little poll there. That was great. And we have a lot of different people from a lot of different places. We have Anwasha from India. Uh, we have someone from Iran. We have another person from India. Cool. Awesome, thank you guys so much for joining. Oh, and we have someone from Brazil. Oh, is someone having difficulty hearing me? Just let me know in the, in the chat here. And, um, hopefully, Ken, you can help uh, this person out. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm going to move on with the content here today. Um, so today, we are going to discuss the IELTS. And um, I won't take too much of your time. As I mentioned, we're going to jump right into the content. So um, in our, the first thing that we're going to discuss is what is the IELTS? Who does it benefit? Who should take it? And what are the various components of the IELTS? So that'll be the first thing we talk about. Then we're going to get into a little bit of the specifics of the listening component of the IELTS. And then we'll talk about how the listening component is scored. We'll then move on to the speaking component of the IELTS and how speaking is scored. And then we will join, um, hopefully be able to make one of you guys uh, or two a panelist and we'll practice some speaking and listening prompts. Then we will leave a little bit of time for a Q&A. Okay, so let's discuss what is the IELTS. Some of you may know what the IELTS is, but essentially the IELTS is an international English language testing system. The testing system is designed for English to immigrate to an English-speaking country. So it is a great opportunity to improve your English skills and to develop some credibility around your English skills. Now we designed this uh, webinar based on some of the requests of our viewers uh, on Instagram as well as on YouTube. So this is why we're having this webinar. Okay, good. I just wanted to double check and make sure everyone can hear me. Okay, um, another important I, uh, notion to make note of is that the IELTS is recognized inter internationally. So it's recognized by a variety of companies, um, as well as a variety of governments. Uh, governments often use IELTS testing in determining if you are a successful applicant to immigrate to Canada, the US, the UK, or um, Australia, or New Zealand. Um, it is internationally recognized 
by various companies. So if you are looking to improve your English skills, if you're looking to apply to a certain company, doing the IELTS test is helpful. And there are two forms of the test. So there's the academic and the general. The academic is for people who are looking to A, transfer their credentials from their home country to an English speaking country. So sometimes people have professional credentials and they're looking to move to an English speaking country. Sometimes this requires transferring their credentials. So doing the IELTS can help with that. Um, and the second reason that someone might take the academic uh, form of the IELTS test is because they're looking to pursue higher education. So perhaps they're looking to do a master's degree or a PhD. Even an undergraduate university degree could require that you take the IELTS. And then we have the general. So the general IELTS test is focused on if you are um, looking to simply migrate to an English speaking country, or if you're looking to eventually pursue higher education in an English speaking country. Just to note, both versions provide a completely accurate uh, test of your proficiency in the English language. And please let me know if I am talking too quickly. Sometimes when I do these presentations, I tend to talk a little fast. So let me know if I'm going too fast for you. Okay, so why would you take the IELTS test? The IELTS test is extremely accurate. So when you take the IELTS test, it is going to show what your true skills are in English. So that can be one reason to take it. A second reason to take the IELTS is to improve your career. If you don't feel strong in your English language skills and you're looking to improve, you might engage in some professional development and think about taking the IELTS test. This can demonstrate to your employer that you're willing to put in the work and you're willing to improve your English skills. This is going to look great on your resume or if you're looking to uh, promote, get a promotion or advance your career. Now let's talk about the various components of the IELTS test. The IELTS test has four components. Um, and, and today we're going to, as I mentioned, there's the academic and the general. Today we're going to focus simply on the general IELTS test. And there are four components. So there's the listening, the reading, the writing, and the speaking component of the IELTS. Today, we chose to focus just on the listening and just on the speaking components, the two of the most important components of the IELTS test. All right, let's talk first about the specifics of the listening component. So, <laughs> so during the listening component, uh, test takers will be asked to listen to four different types of recordings. And here I have them all broken down. You can see them here on the screen. So we have the conversation, we have the monologue, we have the educational context, and we have the academic subject slash university, university lecture. Now let's talk about each one individually. For the conversation component, you will be asked to listen to an everyday conversation between two people. It will happen in an everyday social context. Um, so this is to give you a sense of what normal English speakers might sound like. The number two is a monologue. So this is one person speaking about an everyday topic. So they might be talking about traffic, they might be talking about the roads in a particular um, city or municipality. Um, but just to note that this is just one person talking. Third uh, is the educational context. So this will focus on two people talking, but in an educational context. An example of what you might hear uh, in this component is, the, is possibly a tutor and um, the person they're tutoring, having a conversation about different educational topics. 
And finally, we have the fourth component, which is the academic subject or university lecture. So this is going to give you an opportunity to listen to a university lecture. This will be something that you should become familiar with if you are applying to post-secondary education. So as you can see, these four components really give you a well-rounded understanding of the English language and how to listen to the English language. Now, um, just a quick note, when you are taking the IELTS, you will only have one opportunity to listen to these recordings. So when you are listening, it is really important that you pay attention and that you take in all of the information that is being offered. And another note is that these recordings will be recorded in a variety of different English language accents. As many people know, there are a variety of ways to speak English. My accent is a North American accent. But all of these accents are recorded, or sorry, all of these components are recorded in different accents. So you might hear one one recording in a UK accent, one recording in an Australian accent, one recording in a North American accent, and so on. This is going to give you a well-rounded idea and understanding of the variety of English that there is out there. So I'm just mentioning that because it's important to be aware of before you're going into the IELTS. I'm just checking the notes here. Okay. Sorry, I am talking fast. <laughs> okay, I will try to slow down a little bit. Just let me get a quick drink of water. I hope you don't mind. Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Gina. Okay, can everyone see the PowerPoint? Hopefully you can. All right, so now I wanted to talk about how is the listening scored? So I've given you a bunch of information, but maybe you're wondering how the listening part of the test is actually scored. This test, the IELTS test, is marked by certified markers. All of the answer sheets are then double checked by the Cambridge Assessment Education Center. So they're marked once and then they're marked a second time and everyone who um, completes it is a legitimate academic. Now, once the grades are compiled, they are assigned to a variety of bands. So the way the, um, the way the IELTS is marked is from band one all the way up to band nine. So it's band one, band two, band three, band four, and so on, all the way up into band nine. Band one indicates a non-user of English. So this is someone who speaks a different language and who has never really been exposed to the English language. Band nine indicates someone who is a fluent English speaker. So someone whose English is, um, is fluent and who is generally a, a native speaker of English. So that is how the IELTS is marked. It's not just this section, the whole IELTS um, uh, conforms to that banding strategy. Now, in the listening component in particular, you will be marked on a variety of questions that are asked of you. So once you listen to these four recordings here, you will be asked a variety of questions. So the questions range from multiple choice to matching to labeling diagrams to um, short sentence completion to short answer. So there are a variety of questions that you will be asked and there are 40 questions in this section. Um, and then once the test is marked, one mark is assigned for each correct answer. So out of 40, you are assigned a grade. 
Now, I did want to note that because there are some writing components in this component of the IELTS, you want to make sure that your spelling and your grammar is correct. You will be marked on spelling and you will be marked on grammar. And it is very important to be aware of this before you go in to uh, write the IELTS. So just keep that in mind. All right, did anyone have any questions on this portion of the, uh, the webinar? You can't hear Shaika, you can't hear my uh, voice. Is it still unclear for you? Oh, it's, it's echoey perhaps is what you're saying. It's other, are other people finding that as well? Okay, <laughs> thanks Gina. Okay, so I see someone is asking how to enhance your grammar. Um, I would highly recommend getting a grammar book and practicing basic grammar um, strategies. That This is something that I had to do in my high school English classes. Um, the best way to enhance your grammar is just with practice. So written grammar, um, studying grammar, Grammar is one of those things that you have to do over and over again in order to improve. I know that sounds like a very simple, um, basic answer, but really in order to practice your grammar, it is really important to do the work, do the writing, um, and do some practice every day. So if you already do have an understanding of the English language, it is really important to buckle down and really try to enhance your grammar by doing the work. Okay. Um, and Anwasha, you're asking, are the four sections done together or can I answer them separately? Are you asking, do you mean the four sections of the listening component in particular, or do you mean the uh, four sections of the IELTS in total? I guess I can answer, um, both of those. So the four sections of the listening component are all completed in the same time period. So you'll be asked to listen to all of the recordings and then answer the 40 questions. If you're asking about the four sections of the IELTS, so the three sections on the listening, the writing, and the reading are all completed in one day. And then you can complete the speaking component, which is an oral test, which we'll discuss um, in a couple of minutes. And you can complete the oral test separately on a different day than the rest of the test. But the other three components are completed all in one day. I hope that answered your question. Anwasha, I am under the understanding that you have to listen to all of the four recordings all at once. Um, however, I'm not 100% sure on that, so we can get you the answer and get back to you on that one. Um, but as far as I know, it is all, um, all of the questions, or sorry, all of the recordings at once and then the questions. Um, if anyone does know for certain, please, uh, please let us know. Okay, so thank you guys for your questions. Oh good, you're all set, Shaika, great. Okay, so I'm going to, those were great questions, thank you so much for participating. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to move on to the speaking component of the uh, webinar and of the IELTS. Um, so, as I mentioned, the speaking component is another very important component of the IELTS. Uh, as you can see here, it is an oral interview between the test taker and the examiner. 
So on the day of your test, you will be going into a room with the test, or sorry, with the examiner, and you'll be sitting across from each other and having a conversation. Now, there are three, oh, three. <laughs> there are three parts to this conversation. First is the introduction. So in the introduction, the examiner will be introducing him or herself, talking about a little bit about their role and um, what they're required to do. Then they will begin by asking questions. So for example, they will ask you to introduce yourself. And then they'll ask you some questions about where you live, about your family, about um, some of your interests and hobbies. They'll be asking you a variety of different questions. And this introduction portion is a great way for you to think about getting warmed up. So instead of thinking about it as a test, think about it as you're meeting someone for the first time and they're simply asking you questions about your life. These should be all questions that you are really comfortable answering um, because this is something that we do in everyday life when we meet new people, when we speak English. Um, Okay, so, oh, and just a note that I did forget, um, this portion of the test is recorded. So you will be either video recorded or audio recorded when you are completing this portion of the test. And this is so the examiner can go back and listen to your answers in order to determine a fair grade. So once the introduction has been completed, you will move on to the long term. The long-term portion of the, the exam is where the examiner will ask you to choose from a series of cards. So you will choose a card and each card has a specific topic on it. After you choose your card, you will be given one minute to write down and think about that specific topic. After your one minute of preparation time, you will be asked to speak for two minutes on that specific topic. So I'm going to give you a little anecdote from my personal experience here, um, just because I do think it is helpful when you are going into this type of a test. So remember, you are going to be choosing a card. You're not going to know what the topic is going to be but you'll choose a card and you'll be required to speak on that specific topic for a duration of two minutes. Now, my anecdote, my story is that in high school, I studied French. So my native language is English, but here where I'm from in Canada, uh, we have the second language of French. So I studied French in high school and in university. In my grade 12 year of high school, I was required to complete a French proficiency exam, not unlike the IELTS, very similar to the IELTS. And we had an opportunity to complete a long-term discussion with the examiner. So it was very similar. We sat down, it was recorded, we had an introduction period, and then we moved on to a portion where the examiner asked me to choose a topic and discuss it for two minutes. Now, because I was a bit of a perfectionist in high school and I was a, a high achiever, <laughs> I decided to discuss something very complex in my long-term discussion. It became so complex <laughs> that I did not have the French vocabulary to keep up with what my ideas were. So although I was very keen on presenting a topic that seemed intelligent at the time, I didn't have the language or the vocabulary to be able to express myself. So what I want to suggest is when you are doing the long-term portion, take your time to use a piece of paper and a pencil to write down all of your ideas about that specific topic. 
And always make sure that you don't go over <laughs> your understanding of the English language. So make sure that you have a strong understanding of the vocabulary that you're going to use and don't choose to take the topic in a more complicated direction and then you have the vocabulary for. <laughs> because in the section number three, which is the discussion, you're still going to be focused on that same topic. So in the long term, it is simply you speaking for two minutes about a specific topic. Then the examiner is going to ask you some specific questions on that topic. So you're going to want to make sure that you have enough vocabulary to be able to answer those questions. And then, as I mentioned, in the discussion, you will be using that same topic that you used in the long term, and you're going to be using it to discuss with the examiner. So this is a more broad discussion. So as opposed to simply discussing a more limited understanding of the topic, you can kind of take it a bit more broad. So this might be an opportunity to bring up other topics that you have more confidence speaking about. Um, so that's just a little tip. But in this discussion, um, really what the examiner is looking for is for your fluency in English. So they're looking to understand whether you have an ability to have an easy, fluid, back and forth conversation in English. They're going to be looking at pronunciation, they're going to be looking at vocabulary, and they're going to be looking at whether or not you can carry on a fluid conversation in English. And this part of the test lasts about five minutes. So this will be an ongoing discussion for about five minutes. In total, this total speaking component length should take between 11 to 14 minutes, depending on how long you speak on a specific topic. And just to note that the um, examiner will set a timer to indicate when you have started and when you have completed the uh, speaking components. Okay, I'm going to go right over here to the questions. Did you guys have any more questions? I see that there was one in the Q&A box. Um, so hopefully Gina and Ken will be able to check that out. And let's go back to the chat here. Oops. Yes, please, you guys, if you do have any specific questions, please jump into the Q&A box. That would be great. That's great. Okay, does anyone have any other questions? Um, okay. So Anwasha, I see in the Q&A that you are asking how to determine what band of the IELTS to take. So the band actually indicates what your score is on the IELTS. So once you take the IELTS, you will be assigned a band. So for example, many um, countries that are going through immigration process, they require around a seven, a band seven. So as I mentioned, you will be assigned a band based on what your um, proficiency is in English. And um, a level one proficiency is a, an English non-user. It goes all the way up to a nine, which is a frequent user of English, uh, um, someone who is native to the language. Uh, Anwasha, you're asking again, um, regarding the speaking part, can you give us an example of a topic in the long term round. So I'm actually going to give you some examples of the, um, the 
Yes, the long turn round. Yes, I am actually. So we're going to do that towards the end of the session. Um, but if you did want to look for any other resources, there are tons of resources on the actual IELTS website. Um, so if you go there, they have uh, many different PDFs on specific questions that have been used in the past or examples um, of questions that might be used in future IELTS tests. Um, Hanan, yes, is it possible that examiner chose the card? So you, as the test taker, will be the one choosing the card? I would say no, the examiner is not going to try to skew the results in any way. Um, they try to make these tests as fair as possible. So uh, you will always be given the opportunity to choose the card, and then you can take it in the direction that you feel comfortable with. And Shaika, when I took the exam, there were no cards to choose. The questions were dependent on the conversation and the answers. So that is possible. Um, it's possible that depending on which test center you go to, it could be slightly different. Um, this is uh, what the official IELTS um, website indicates, that there are always cards present. However, if, um, it could have been different in your experience, and perhaps your test center was a little bit different. Okay, so I'm actually going to jump into one more piece of content. Anwesha, I see that you have a question here. I will definitely um, answer it in one moment. Uh, just, just, uh, I just want to finish up this section, and then we'll do another little Q&A. Thank you guys so much for your questions. This is great. I love that uh, there's so much engagement. It's wonderful. Thank you guys for taking the time. Okay, so let's talk about how speaking is scored. So same as the listening component, we're going to talk about how the speaking component is scored. So when the examiner is looking at your uh, test, or listening to your test in that case, in this case, um, they will be looking for a variety of criteria. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in the speaking component, they will be looking at four different criteria in particular. So they'll be looking at fluency and coherence. So as the speaker, can you link ideas and language together in a way that makes sense? So are you fluent? Do all your words come together in proper sentences? Do you speak at a regular pace? So are you speaking slowly or can you speak at a regular rate um, that a native English speaker might? Second, they'll be looking at lexical resource. And all this means is whether you have the vocabulary to speak about different topics. So do you have the words to be able to speak about a variety of different topics? And what's more, they're looking as to whether you can use the words correctly. So if you have a bunch of vocabulary, but you don't know how to use them correctly, it's possible that um, they might uh, mark you lower on this. Uh, then they are looking at grammatical range and accuracy. So they'll be looking at whether you use correct grammar and if you have any grammatical errors. So um, as Anwesha, you were mentioning, you were asking about how to improve your grammar. I would say doing the written component and practicing uh, is a great way, but also finding the opportunity to speak to English speakers is also a wonderful um, idea as well. Then you'll be looking at pronunciation. So are you easily understood? And in this case, I wouldn't worry so much about your accent because English is becoming an international language. And I know a lot of people can be concerned about um, how their accent comes across. However, as I mentioned, there are so many different ways to speak English and so many different accents. And we're never going to speak the same. So in this case, I would be more concerned about your pronunciation, how you whether you know the words, whether you're able to speak the words. And they're also looking at 
if you're difficult to understand. So try to work on your pronunciation, try to work on enunciating the words, and all this takes is simply practice. So practicing in the mirror, practicing into your phone and recording yourself and playing it back, these are all great ways to learn the English language. So that is the marking criteria for the speaking component. Um, hopefully that was helpful. And now we're moving into the prompt questions and practice time. So uh, we had Anwasha asking about uh, whether we would have an opportunity to practice some of the long form questions. And here are some ideas of potential long form questions which might be asked. So I'll just read them out loud and then perhaps we will have people uh, raise their hand as to whether they would like to participate as a panelist. So remember, you will be um, on the screen and everyone else uh, in the webinar will be able to hear you, but it's a wonderful opportunity to practice one-on-one -on -one and have a conversation. So I will pretend that I am the examiner and I will ask you some of these questions. Okay, so the questions are, let's talk about your hometown or village. What kind of place is it? What is, what's the most interesting part of your town or village? What kind of jobs do the people in your town do? Would you say it's a good place to live? And why? So we have these questions, and then I have another series of questions as well. If you did want to participate as a panelist, um, I would happily give you the opportunity to um, answer either of these sets of questions. So the second one focuses on accommodation or living um, arrangement. So what kind of accommodation do you live in? How long have you lived there? What do you like about living there? And what sort of accommodation would you most like to live in? Okay, let's see if anyone is interested in going live with me as a panelist. I'll let you guys see the first questions again, just in case you're uh, considering it. So Anwasha, I see you have a question here, um, and it's a really, really good question. Um, how much does the examiner look into the critical points made regarding the topic, apart from the fluency part? So I believe you are asking how much is the examiner looking into whether your points are legitimate? So in the IELTS, the uh, examiner is looking at your fluency. So they're looking at whether you can communicate a point. They're not necessarily looking into testing your historical uh, accuracy or um, you know, doing fact checking of any kind. This is simply a, um, a language test. So they're looking more at your grammar, your fluency, your vocabulary, uh, etc. Um, Ken, uh, you can choose anyone that would like to go live. I see a few hands up there. Perfect. Hello, if you could turn your mic on, that would be great. Oh, perfect. Hi. Hi. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Uh, I'm so happy to um, have conversation with you. Thank you so much for joining me. So, would you like to ask? <laughs> would you like to answer some of the questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, I live in uh, I live in Isfahan, uh, and a historic city of Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the people uh, in Isfahan. Uh, are uh, working at industrial uh, parts of the city okay. uh, and a river uh, passed among uh, the city 
So uh, some of the people uh, are working in um, agriculture okay. uh, and have farm. Uh, and I can't remember uh, the question. Um, the last question was, um, oh, would you say it's a good place to live? And why? Yeah. Yes, uh, because I think, um, yes, it's the best uh, place to live because I think uh, there is, um, there is um, enough jobs for people that uh, they mm -hmm. immigrate to, uh, my city. Uh, it's. I think there is a, a lot of uh, migrate migrate uh, from all over my country. Okay. Uh, and yes, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Did you want to try the second set of questions? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, if uh, someone else wants to try, I can uh, leave, and someone else join your. Okay, maybe we'll give someone else a chance to do it. But your English is great. You did a great job. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for accepting me. Of course. Thank you for jumping on with me and talking. Take care. Uh, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so bye. much. Bye. <laughs> Okay, um, Ken and Gina, what do you think? Do we have time for maybe one more person or should we move on um, and maybe answer some more Q&A questions? Okay, we have a... Okay, I'll answer a couple more Q&A questions. Sorry, just doing a quick uh, check-in with my colleagues here. Um, but Fatih, we can definitely uh, jump on with you. I see your hand up. I'm just going to answer some Q&A questions and then Ken will be able to make you a panelist. So if you could just keep your hand up there. <laughs> Um, we'll definitely check in with you in a couple minutes. Okay, I'm going to check in with the Q&A. Do the IELTS simulated tests, even if paid on the internet? Um, I'm not, you're going to have to specify what do you mean about simulated tests. Um, I'm not 100% sure on your question, so if you could be a bit more specific, then I'd be happy to answer. So Muntadur uh, Karim, which are the factories, the factors that determine to get a good score? So as I mentioned, uh, in the speaking, speaking and listening components, there are a variety of factors that are being looked at to determine whether you get a good score. Overall, they are simply looking that you have a strong, uh, a relatively strong command of the English language despite um, being a non-native English speaker. Sorry about that, just give me one second. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, in particular, for the speaking component, they are looking to determine whether you are fluent in English, whether you have a strong command of different vocabulary, whether you're not making any grammatical errors, and whether you can converse in a, a real-time rate of com conversation. Um, now, in the listening component, they are looking to determine whether you are able to answer a variety of questions. All of the questions that I covered um, in the listening component, uh, such as multiple choice, um, diagram labeling, fill in the blank, um, and all of those variety of questions. Um, so each component of, this, of the IELTS has different criteria that they're looking at. And really what they want is to get a, a sense of whether you have a command of the English language. Great, I hope that answered your question. 
Okay. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, it doesn't look like we have any more Q and A and it doesn't look like we have any more hands up. So I think that this um, is the end of our webinar. So thank you guys so much for joining me in our very first English language webinar. We had uh, some amazing participants. We were able to connect um, and we were able to uh, have some people on here, which was absolutely wonderful. Now, I just wanted to give you a quick reminder that Homework Help Global can meet all of your academic paper needs. Um, we do editing, we do writing, we help you with PowerPoints, resumes, a variety of different um, essay writing needs and we can meet you where you are and work with you to fulfill any of your needs. If you do have any needs, please contact us at info at homeworkhelpglobal.com and let us know what you need help with. Um, we also create free online academic uh, English content as well as academic content on YouTube. So make sure to look us up on YouTube at Homework Help Global, um, uh, the Homework Help Show, sorry. Um, and as I mentioned, we also have our Student Influencers podcast that you can check out as well. Just search Homework Help Global and you'll see all of our information. You can also visit our website um, for more information on how to place an order for academic support services. Uh, so as my colleagues kindly mentioned, they, um, this video will be shared on YouTube, so make sure to check that out and uh, you'll be able to access it again. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all I had to mention. So please, um, thanks again for joining us on our very first webinar. Let us know if you found this helpful and provide us of any feedback that, on how we can improve for the next time. And after the webinar, we'll be prompting you to fill out a survey. So if you could fill that out and provide us with more feedback, that would be wonderful. I do see some people in the chat, so I'm going to double check. Thank you guys. Oh yes, and Gina, thank you for the reminder. So if you guys do need any more help with the IELTS, we are currently in the process of creating an IELTS um, support program. So we're creating a course that can specifically help you with the IELTS. And that is going to include one-on-one -on -one practice with me. So definitely stay tuned to all of our social channels and our newsletter to get more information on that. We're really excited to launch this as we think we can help a lot of people um, to prepare for the IELTS. So we're really excited. Okay, as I mentioned, just a quick reminder, we have a survey um, that we are going to release just after this webinar. You'll be prompted to fill it out. So if you could do that, that would be a great help to us. Stay tuned for more information on our English language course and our IELTS support course. Uh, that is coming out really soon. And again, thank you guys so much for joining me. Really enjoyed having you um, and hopefully we will talk soon. Thanks guys, take care.